Welcome back to Local 4 News today on a Monday morning. Remnants of Nate, a former hurricane, bringing us some very spotty showers, especially our west zone and north zone right now. But we've had showers everywhere, so the streets are a little bit slippery. 64 degrees now in temperatures eventually with more and more afternoon sun getting up to about 77. Kim. All right, well, we've got trouble on our freeways this morning. We're looking at north and southbound I-75 ramps to westbound I-96. That is closed right now. They're alternating those ramps to let them get by on the shoulder. However, the good news is, is that you can see the tow truck on the scene. They're doing a great job of cleaning this jackknife semi up. But in the meantime, you're going to want to use Lodge to I-94 to loop around this one. All right, Kim, thank you. Happening today, tickets are set to become available for the beatification mass for Father Solanus Casey. Tickets are going to be available while supplies last to the public at 9 this morning, exclusively on the Ford Field website. The mass is set to happen Saturday, November 18th at 4 p.m. at Ford Field. Tickets are free with a, a small uh, per order processing fee, and they're limited to a maximum of four tickets per order. But I know a number of people uh, looking to attend this very holy uh, event. Absolutely. Time now is 526. And ahead in our next half hour, stories from across Metro Detroit, including Sterling Heights, Oak Park, and Southfield. Plus, St. Louis rap star Nelly is out of jail and talking about the rape allegations that he's facing. We'll have everything you need to know. Plus, buyer beware. There is a Help Me Hank alert about Halloween costumes, especially the ones you buy online. And it's a murder mystery. A young man gunned down in Superior Township and no arrests have been made. We'll update the investigation coming up next. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 5.30 starts now. Every second counts. Plan two ways out. That is the theme of this year's Fire Prevention Week. And this morning, experts reveal the best way to keep your family protected. Plus, an important warning for Halloween shoppers, the costumes and other items that you should avoid buying online because they could be dangerous for your children. Plus, morning rain moving away and making way for another nice day. Did that rhyme? I think so. Yeah, way day. Very good. Look at that. <laughs> the big question is, though, how long is the rain going to last? And are we going to see summer-like temperatures like what we saw on... Well, at least for part of the day on Saturday. Yes. It was kind of nice. And yesterday was absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, it so was. Let's get over to Brandon. When will we see the rain end and the summer-like weather return? Well, for now, the rain is going to stay, but later on, the sun will produce a ray, and the kids will be able to get out and play. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just came up with that over the last 30 seconds. It took me that long and it was terrible. Thank you. Good morning and happy Columbus Day. Low 60s in all four zones. Visibility isn't too bad, but we do have showers around from former Hurricane Nate through parts of uh, Livingston County, Oakland into Lapeer, Sanilac County getting the heaviest stuff. So west and north of Detroit. But over the last few hours, we've had plenty of uh, light to moderate shower activity a little closer to home. So we have slippery streets out there regarding regardless of where you're heading, but fewer drips closer to downtown, at least for now. And eight, nine o'clock, those showers and any low clouds producing drizzle beginning to end. Lower 60s through 8 a.m., 71 degrees at noon, partly sunny skies becoming mostly sunny. 77, your afternoon high temperature around three or four o'clock should be a good one. But in the meantime, the morning rain from Nate creating some issues. Which I really do hate because of Nate. It's not great out there. <laughs> uh, but seriously, let's take a look at what's going on over here on north and southbound I-75. The ramps to westbound I-96, that's what we're looking at right now. They are closed because there were two jackknife semis in this area. They're working on cleaning it up. They were alternating which 75 ramps they were allowing to get by on the shoulder. But right now, it looks like those cars are at a standstill. Backups are starting to build. So you're going to want to avoid this area. You can use the lodge to I-94 or vice versa to loop around this. Of course, we'll keep you updated on exactly what's going on here and when this reopens. But for now, this is going to be a tricky commute this morning. And I also want to let you know about another accident over on the Davison. We're talking about the westbound ramp to the lodge here. We do have an accident that is blocking your shoulder, so be careful while traveling this way as well. Back to you.
All right, Kim, thank you. It is 533 and our top story this half hour is the search for a gunman after a 20 year old is shot and killed over the weekend in Superior Township. Yes, yeah, deputies are saying that it started with a fight at this apartment complex. Let's get to local fours. Rod Maloney. He joins us now live and Rod, do police have a description of the person they're looking for? No, in, in fact, Rhonda, that's sort of the, the key to this whole thing is, is that there is so much that went on there and that the investigation is continuing and yet there is so little anybody seems to know about the situation. Now, killed was 20-year-old DeAndre Willingham and he died after being taken to the hospital there in Ypsilanti. And it happened about 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Some sort of fight broke out, but police are not telling us more uh, information than that. It was the Danbury Park Manor Apartments off of MacArthur Boulevard near Gettys Road. And so this fight ensued. Someone gets shot. DeAndre Willingham is then brought to the hospital. We're not even certain how he got there, whether it was by ambulance or perhaps somebody uh, put him in a car and took him to the hospital to see if they can get him some help. So the uh, police certainly are investigating, looking for any information that uh, they can get, including information that anybody who they haven't spoken with yet could certainly offer. Reporting live, Rod Maloney, Local 4. All righty, Rod, thank you for the update there. It is 534. And close to three weeks after Hurricane Maria hammered Puerto Rico, a Metro Detroit family joins the chorus that is pleading for help for the island. Shannon Vidal is from Puerto Rico, but lives here in Oak Park. His mother was on the island when the Category 4 storm hit, and was he was able to get her out of Puerto Rico and away from all the devastation, but only for a few days. But for two weeks, he had no idea if she survived or not. Very hectic. Very, very hectic. Um, just trying to get in contact. I wanted people to understand the severity of the situation. And you can see he is even still emotional about it. The island still is without power. Uh, they need water, they need food, they even need fuel. UNICEF, the Red Cross, and other organizations are accepting help with relief for Puerto Rico. In Sterling Heights, a special celebration was held to honor some of the city's brave first responders. City leaders honored police officers, firefighters, and others who went above and beyond over the course of the past year, including the dispatchers who helped coordinate the emergency crews who responded to the four alarm fire at the Buff Whelan Chevrolet this past summer. Lieutenant Dave Presser and Firefighter of the Year. Nice. It's nice to be appreciated and recognized. You know, uh, any number of guys could have gotten this, so to be recognized and appreciated is very, very cool. When I review the incidents and stuff, it kind of chokes me up, uh, but it's it's good to uh, honor people and recognize them for their efforts. It certainly is, and it was a wonderful ceremony held as part of the fire station's annual open house where families are invited to learn about fire safety and prevention much. on a beautiful summer-like fall day. Absolutely. It is now 536, and one officer opened fire with his taser, the other his gun. Yeah, this morning there are new questions being raised about the use of deadly force, this time in Utah. And ahead in the carport at 6 o'clock, a new partnership to promote Metro Detroit. We'll tell you all about this big plan involving the new Little Caesars Arena, the Palace, DTE, and more. And real-life drama in Hollywood, a prominent producer is fired from his own company. Yeah, his own brother is among those who voted him out. We're back in a minute. Our client. Welcome back, everybody. A young girl falls from the Ferris wheel at a carnival in Richmond, Virginia. Officials say that the girl, who is around 10 years old, fell about 10 to 12 feet. The ride was shut down and emergency workers got everyone else off of the Ferris wheel safely. The city inspector was called in to investigate. Witnesses say that the girl was able to unlock the latch to open the car door on the ride while it was moving. A company representative operating the carnival said that the incident was caused by, quote, patron error. The girl's injuries, thankfully, were not life threatening. One of the most powerful moguls in Hollywood fired from his own movie company. We're talking about Harvey Weinstein and his troubles. They started on Thursday when The New York Times reported that he had reached at least eight settlements with women who accused him of sexual harassment and unwanted physical conduct. 
Weinstein took a voluntary leave of absence from the company, and Sunday the company announced that he was fired. Weinstein's brother is one of the board members who voted to fire him. Weinstein has not commented just yet. New information this morning on the demolition of the former Northland Mall. The city of Southfield, where the mall sits, says that demolition is set to begin by the end of the month. The Macy's and formerly Hudson's portion is set to remain intact due to its historical and architectural significance. In 2015, the last operating stores in the mall closed. Demolition and cleanup is expected to cost between eight and ten million dollars. All right, everybody, we've got a couple of Help Me Hate consumer alerts to tell you about as you're waking up this morning. Some very important ones at that. First, it's Fire Prevention Week, and this year's theme is Every Second Counts, Plan Two Ways Out. And the week aims to better educate the public on the importance of having an emergency home escape plan and to practice it with your entire family. Your plan should include having working smoke detectors on every level of your house and knowing two ways out of every room in your home, something that could definitely help save lives in the event of an emergency. And if you're still shopping for that perfect Halloween costume and the accessories that go along with it, beware of getting deceived online. Brand protection firm Mark Monitor warns that counterfeiters take advantage of online shoppers and that you should steer clear of their sites using terms like cheap or discount. So if a price looks a little too good to be true compared to what you've seen it normally cost on other websites, that should raise a red flag for you and you should be cautious. You should also be wary of potentially dangerous novelty contact lenses and fake makeup that can lead to painful damage specifically to your eyes or your skin. Rhonda and Everett, I want to get your impression of this local four storm pin. What do you see here? I see the United States. No, I see the entire world. The United States of America there on the left I, and then I agree. Europe, Europe and uh, Asia and Africa and even what is that like Australia or something? Right? Yep. That's a horrible drawing of the USA. <laughs> What's the deal with this? That's that's such a small Atlantic Ocean in between. I mean, come on, if you're gonna oh, Angia? Wait. This is the clouds. This was not somebody doing this. I forgot. This is uh, over in Ann Arbor, and this is a Fraser with a map of the world from Ann Arbor. What an awesome cloud shot there and it's what you love about clouds maybe with the kids you're out looking at them looking for shapes and things like that sometimes it just happens good morning everybody 64 degrees outside your door right now and a few spotty showers in a few areas but we've all had a little bit of rain overnight so the roads are a little slippery and may take you a little longer to get to where you're going 60 degrees at 8 a.m 70 degrees at noon 77 later this afternoon with obviously improving conditions if we're going to see those temperatures getting into the middle and maybe upper 70s you see some of the showers right now that are coming across well, leaving the Lansing area now through Livingston County into Genesee, parts of Oakland County. Also seeing some spotty showers, northern Oakland, Lapeer, Sanilac County, and over into southern Ontario with some drips uh, and drizzle with some low clouds and fog for us closer to Detroit. So again, still a little on the slippery side. Tomorrow we get the effects of this cool front cooling us down a little bit. No shower activity expected as we head into your Tuesday, but we'll see a little bit of uh, cloud cover and cooler temperatures by about five or six degrees. It should be a pretty nice one. Here's a look at uh, Monday afternoon, Columbus Day looking good here with improving conditions through the morning and well into the afternoon with those middle upper 70s. Here comes that cool front through the overnight and we get uh, some cloud cover from this and Temperatures in the upper 60s and low 70s tomorrow should be a good one. Tasty Tuesday and then on Wednesday we have some showers that will be coming at us mainly during the morning hours, keeping our temperatures down even more. So we go through a little bit of a skid here today, not 67 it's 77 on this Columbus Day 71 tomorrow showers on Wednesday will be again through maybe one or two o'clock in the afternoon and then leaving improving a little bit through the afternoon Thursday Friday Saturday temperatures building up once again getting into the middle 70s Friday Saturday and some morning rain and thunder possible on 
Sunday, but this morning's rain having an impact. Oh, it certainly has, but I have some good news. About an hour ago, this looked a lot worse. We had two jackknife semis out here. Now we don't have any. They have towed those away, but we still have that closure to get you around because they are cleaning up right now. So it may be clearing in a few minutes, but we're going to keep you um, on that alternate route for the meantime. So let's take a look here. This is north and southbound I-75 ramps here to westbound I-96. They're letting some cars go by on the shoulder right now, but again, all of those lanes are blocked. So you're going to want to use the lodge to I-94 to get around this. What happened here is we had two jackknife semis, but they are cleaning it up, so we'll keep you updated. I also want to let you know about another problem over on the Davison, the westbound ramp to northbound lodge. That is where we have another accident. The shoulder is blocked there, so you may see a little bit of a delay there as well. Back to you. All righty, Kim, thank you. At 547, let's get into some stories that you might have missed. Today, we could learn the fate of a Miami Dolphins coach who is the subject of a drug investigation. Yes, yeah, so the league is investigating after this video surface showing offensive line coach Chris Forrester allegedly snorting an unknown powdery substance at some point during his career. In the 50-second video, which has gone viral, it shows the coach snorting the substance through a rolled-up $20 bill. It's unclear how old the video is, but Forster has worked 24 seasons in the NFL for eight different teams. The Dolphins have yet to comment on that video. Very alarming. Yeah, it is. All right, let's talk about Nelly. The St. Louis rapper was arrested, arrested in Washington state after a woman told police that he raped her. The woman claims the attack happened on Saturday on the rapper's tour bus. He was booked for investigation and was released a few hours later without being charged. Nelly tweeted that he is completely innocent and will be vindicated. So we will watch how that plays out. Yeah, we'll definitely follow that one. Uh, Sunday hours have returned to the Detroit Public Library after nearly, what, 40 years? Yes, the Detroit Public Library was one of the first library systems to offer Sunday hours before they were discontinued all the way back in 1981. The Public Library will now be open at three locations on Sundays, including the main library in Midtown Detroit, which is so gorgeous. Also, the Redford branch on the west side and the Wilder branch on the city's east side. And each branch will open between the hours of 1 and 5 p.m. These extended hours will go through May of 2018. So nice. you have a destination spot on the weekends. Absolutely. Time now is 548. Tim Lester had a very memorable first road win as head coach of Western Michigan. Oh yeah, down in the record books. The Broncos won their game against the Buffalo Bills. 70 Buffalo Bulls, I should say, 71 to 68. That's a football score, everybody. There were seven <laughs> overtimes in this game. The game set a college record for points scored in total, 139. Wow, would you look at that. Uh, the sister of a Western tight end celebrated the team's epic, uh, epic uh, uh, situation a, a little, little early yeah. during the first overtime. <laughs> there you see her. She ran out onto the field to, you know, celebrate with her brother after he caught that 14 yard touchdown pass. Well, his sister went out onto the field to celebrate the win with him, but the game wasn't over. So she got thrown out of the game. The Broncos got a 15 yard penalty for illegal relatives on the field. <laughs> <laughs> sister was ejected from the game and didn't get a chance to see them actually win it. That's too bad. Yeah. <laughs> you you can't imagine? blame her for being a little excited. And I wonder how he reacted like, God, what, what are you doing? <laughs> it's hard to contain yourself sometimes. Time now is 5.50 and this morning Dove is apologizing for a social media campaign that many find offensive. We'll show it to you and let you decide for yourself. Plus the new return policy, one company claims will make sending things back actually enjoyable. That and more when we come right back. Tonight at 10. Welcome back to Local 4 News today. Just about 5.54 on a Monday morning. Weather and traffic on the fours. And we do have some spotty showers. Everybody say good morning to Nate, former hurricane, now a post uh, tropical cyclone that is over Ohio and Pennsylvania. So we're on the very western fringe of this with spotty light showers, but the roads are a little bit slippery from the last several hours of Nate. Eventually this morning we're going to dry out and late morning into the afternoon sun comes back. We're up to about 77 degrees this afternoon, Kim. 
All right, Brandon. Well, speaking of ramp, or being slippery out there, those ramps are slippery, and right now we're dealing with a problem we had over on north and southbound I-75, the ramps to westbound I-96. They're cleaning up a situation of a jackknife semi right now. However, if you do travel this way, the backups are still pretty bad, so you may want to use Lodge to I-94 if you're headed out the door right now. All right, Kim, thank you. It is 554 and police in Salt Lake City now are releasing a body cam footage of a deadly officer involved shooting from back in August. And in the video, Patrick Harmon is pulled over while riding his bicycle and takes off when officers tried to arrest him. One officer fired his taser. The other fired shots three times with his gun at Harmon. And because Harmon was running away, many questioned the use of deadly force, and the officers have given different stories of exactly what happened that night. Harmon reportedly had a knife, and two officers say that he said something similar to, I'm going to cut. A third officer heard the word stab and says Harmon briefly turned around or looked back, so the officer considered Harmon a threat. The district attorney's office decided the shooting was justified, a justified use of deadly force. Well, Dove, the company, is apologizing after a social media post that the company says missed the mark representing African-American women. The controversy started after Dove kicked off this new ad campaign for a body wash product. Now, the ad shows a black woman appearing to be removing her shirt, but not fully. And then the following photos show the white woman fully removing the shirt. Well, shortly after, people took to Twitter calling it racist, saying that the ad suggested before before and after comparison, Dove has since removed the ad and posted an apology on Twitter. Trying to understand what they actually meant in that ad. You I know. think they were trying to express that this is a product for everybody, but the way they executed it did not go over well. And I missed the mark there. It is 556, everybody. Returning items online or uh, that you've bought online or in a store often can be a hassle. It can be. So Walmart claims to have essentially reinvented the wheel on how you return products to make the process a little less frustrating. Next month, the retailer plans to launch an initiative it calls Mobile Express Returns. Use Using the Walmart mobile app to speed up and simplify returns. You select the item or items that you want to return in the Walmart app and later at the Walmart store you can use a special mobile express lane to speed up the process. So we'll have to see how that works because if a lot of people use it, you could encounter a line the there line too. There, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coming up all new at 6 everybody right here on Local 4 News today. Stories from Detroit, Dearborn and possibly even your community. Plus McDonald's is looking to make things right with customers with the fast food chain is doing following weekend protests over a special sauce. We'll have more on that. And they're supposed to help you with your money, but some are just looking to help themselves and their pockets. We'll tell you what you can do to protect yourself from shady financial advisors. That's coming up when we come back in one minute. Keep it here. It's live from downtown Detroit. Local 4 News Today at 6 starts now. Happy Monday, everybody. Good morning. Rise and shine. Thanks for waking up with us on this Columbus Day. Yes, a rainy Columbus Day at that. And we've got a lot of news to get to this morning. We do, including a push to provide a safe place for ATV riding in the city of Detroit following the controversial police chase that ended in the death of a Detroit teen. Plus, how bad is it? This is the question all Lions fan has this morning. After Lions quarterback Matt Stafford was spotted limping off the field, after the team's loss to Carolina, we'll let you hear what the QB said after the game that uh, might concern some fans. What he said or didn't say. Right, exactly. Also, the remnants of Tropical Depression Nate. We're seeing some rain across the metro area. Will it stick around for the entire day? Brandon Rue is here to give us our look at the forecast for today. How are we looking? Well, we have some wet roadways, no doubt about it. Still wet in some spots. And you can see the six hour replay about midnight. We saw some heavier showers on the east side. So I-75, I-94 on the east side will be a little bit slippery. Currently, however, a lot of this is west through parts of Livingston County, northern Oakland County, up into Lapeer, Sanilac, and it's spotty where we don't see the showers. We're getting some low clouds and drizzle, so not ideal for sure to start, but things improve 
Wait for it. 64 degrees outside right now. A little northeast wind at 7 on this Columbus Day. Low 60s at the bus stop and still a little bit slippery, so make sure we're careful. Sunrise time 739 AM. Midday through the afternoon, more and more sunshine pouring in. 77 degrees, the high temperature, and those skies becoming mostly sunny through the afternoon. Your four zone weather is ready for you. If you're heading out and you want to see temperatures and a couple of rain chances over the next seven days, you can find your zone four zone weather local. Uh, I'm sorry, click on Detroit.com on the weather tab. Here's Kim now for live traffic. Some issues this morning. That's right. We do have wet roads so careful is the key word this morning take it easy give yourself some extra time because this is hard to drive in so let's take a look at what we're dealing with this has been a big problem all morning this is the north and southbound i-75 ramps to westbound i-96 they're currently closed right now we had two jackknife semi trucks out here they have cleared those they're working on cleaning the scene it should be reopening soon but in the meantime they're kind of alternating each side of north and southbound i-75 ramps to get by so it's going to be a little bit of a backup, so you still want to use that alternate route that I told you earlier. That is the Lodge to I-94 and vice versa to get around this one. We also want to let you know over or an accident over on westbound I-96. The express lanes just past Southfield Freeway here. The right shoulder is blocked. Expect a little a delay here. And then over on the westbound lanes of the da Davison, the ramp to the lodge here. The shoulder is blocked, so be careful there too. Back to you. All right, and Kim, thank you to 602 now. And his death is the center of controversy and an investigation. It certainly is. 15-year-old Damon Grimes was killed after he was tased by a state trooper attempting to pull him over. He later crashed the ATV that he was riding on and died. Now his family and friends want to remember him with a very special park dedicated to those that enjoy riding ATVs in the city. Rod Maloney joins us now live with more. Yeah, good morning, Rhonda. You know, this case has been uh, highly controversial. It's brought a lot of change already. Michigan State Police now saying that they will no longer conduct chases within the limits of the city of Detroit. In the meantime, uh, the family here that is so uh, grievously hurt uh, is saying, look, they want to have a way that they can remember their son and their, uh, their loved one. And so this is the way they want to do it with an ATV park. He would have loved it. Family and friends rode their ATVs in tribute to Damon Grimes. We need people with resources. We need people to help make this a reality. We don't want this to linger out. By next summer, we want to be seeing the first ATV park here on the east side of Detroit. The 15-year-old died after a state police trooper fired a taser at him while he was allegedly illegally riding his ATV through his neighborhood and failed to follow orders to stop. That was my baby. It's hard to like even believe that he's actually gone. The medical examiner says Grimes died of blunt force trauma head injuries and had taser leads stuck in the back of his head and back. He slammed into a flatbed. MSP and Detroit police each launched investigations following the death last August. The trooper accused of using his stun gun resigned. Two other troopers suspended. Everybody just want to see justice in this matter. You know, I mean, we don't want to see things like that. Damon's family hopes this piece of land can be turned into an ATV park in Grimes' honor. It's a great thing. People can, if they can't ride them on the streets, at least they can, you know, hook them up to a trailer and get to the park and ride their bike freely. Now, there, uh, again, much controversy with this case and also with the Michigan State Police. Uh, we know that the, uh, the state police commander uh, also put up a Facebook post that has uh, some in the city of Detroit quite upset as well. And so they're going to take both of those concerns uh, to the Capitol uh, this weekend as they intend to have another protest out in front of the police uh, department there, Michigan State Police Department, uh, where they can talk about all of these issues that, that uh, they're deeply concerned about, uh, and in particular, the Grimes case as well. Back to you. All right, Rob, before we let you go, has there been any other legal action in this case? Uh, yes, there has. Uh, Jeffrey Figer has sued in this case, and as a matter of fact, they were in federal court on Friday trying to get an emergency hearing to try and to prevent any kind of uh, evidence from being lost or uh, disposed of in some fashion. There was a claim, a media claim, that there was one of the uh, leads from the taser in this case had been thrown away mm -hmm. by one of the police officers. Figer's office wanted to have an opportunity to uh, 
uh, may, to force the state police to make sure that they save all the evidence. The judge, in fact, signed an order to that effect. All right, Rod, thank you. And certainly would be a positive way for the Grimes family to remember their loved one and also something for people to do on a lot of vacant land here in Detroit. So we'll see how this plays out both legally and for the community. Thank you, Rod. Back right over to you. Now we want to get you updated on the very latest in the investigation into a possible motive behind the mass shooting in Las Vegas. Over the weekend, federal investigators once again went into the home to search uh, the home of gunman 64 year old Stephen Paddock. The search of the home in the town of Mesquite, Nevada was for redocumenting and rechecking. That's according to police. It was exactly one week ago that Paddock opened fire onto a crowd at the Route 91 Harvest Festival, killing 58 people and injuring nearly 500. Well, earlier this morning, exactly a week again since that shooting, the Las Vegas Strip dimmed its famous skyline to pay tribute to the victims. Sunday, hundreds also filled Las Vegas churches to seek comfort from last week's tragic event. And then here, a little bit closer to home, a group gathered in Dearborn to show solidarity with Vegas. A vigil was held outside the Henry Ford Centennial Library and people who were in attendance there paid tribute to the victims and prayed. They prayed for the physical and emotional recovery for those who survived this horrific event. President Trump is defending Vice President Pence's decision to leave a 49ers Colts game after watching players kneel during the national anthem. The president said he was, quote, proud of Pence and his wife for leaving. Pence later tweeted, I will not dignify any event that disrespects our soldiers, our flag, or our national anthem. The 49ers safety Eric Reed says that this was a planned publicity stunt. So this looks like a PR stunt to me. He knew um, our team has had the most players protests. He knew that we were probably going to do it again. The players are protesting racial injustice in our country. Reed there also says that the vice president was, quote, trying to refuse, or I'm sorry, trying to confuse the message. A Twitter feud broke out on Sunday between President Trump and Tennessee Senator Bob Corker after Corker indicated that he intended not to vote in favor of key parts of the president's health care agenda. Trump tweeted that Corker begged the president for an endorsement in his reelection, but Trump said no. In response, Corker tweeted that the White House became an adult daycare center and someone missed a shift on Sunday. He then went on to slam the president, saying that he lacked the stability and confidence competence to do his job. It's going back and forth. It is 608, everybody. It is, and it's what we like to see. Gas prices going down. We'll tell you by how much if you need to gas up this morning. Plus, Jason is here in studio with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Up next, a very special announcement. Detroit's entertainment titans joining forces. Tom Wilson tells all about it. The big reveal coming up after these commercial messages. Tonight at 10. Good Monday morning. Let's talk to your financial advisor, how to protect yourself from a financial advisor. We've heard about some of them stealing client money. What do you do to protect yourself? Here's what you do. First, you check registrations, okay? You go online, you look up the SEC, the NASD, the State Securities Division, and you go online and you actually do that research. Check the names because that's important. That's an important first step. Then you go and you check the credentials. CFP, Certified Financial Planner, CFA, CHFC, Chartered Financial Consultant. That has a lot to do with continuing education and making sure they stay up to speed with the entire industry. You want to check for experience and also investment style. And then have they been sued? Have they been censured? Are there any complaints filed against them? You will find those all online. Check them out. We have all of the links to do all of this right now today on clickondetroit.com on the Maloney Money page. The summer. Well, they told us it was coming. The two organizations behind Detroit's biggest concerts and bookings are joining forces. And here to tell us about the big news is Olympia Entertainment President and CEO Tom Wilson. Good morning. Good to see you again. Good to see you, Jason. So what is it going to be called and what does it mean for the average concert goer or ticket buyer? Well, it's going to be called 313 Presents, and it's bringing together the best of the entertainment people from Olympia and the best of the people from, from Palace Sports to really focus in on bringing as much talent to the city as we can. So what it means is one-stop shopping for concerts for most of the major venues here, and it means we're going to be able to bring a, a more diverse and wide spectrum of entertainment to Detroit so that the fans have uh, many, many, many more options than they even have today. So if I were to buy a ticket, where would I go? You would just go to 313 Presents.com. 
Comerica.com, and uh, everything will be there. And by everything, we're talking about Comerica Park, the new Little Caesars Arena, of course, the Fox Theater, DTE, uh, Meadowbrook, and also, of course, Freedom Hill. So it's all your summer entertainment and really all of your winter and fall entertainment as well. Well, you mentioned the LCA. Uh, you said you'd never seen anything like it at the Wings game. What happened now? Oh, it was just kind of interesting because uh, sold out arena, everybody was in their seats and the building has so much to see that at the end of the first period, everybody went back out and we kept saying, <laughs> well, my gosh, how interesting is this? It, it was fascinating to watch people just circle the concourse, take everything in and then come back for the hockey game. So uh, 313presents.com, how does that jibe with like a Ticketmaster or a StubHub or just coexist? It, it, they sort of coexist. Yeah, everything does. But uh, you know, the nice thing is that uh, you can offer an artist when they decide they want to come here their opportunity to do anything because sting for example in the last five or six years has played the fox theater when he was out just trying to do more of an acoustic set and then yeah. he's played dte he's played the palace so he's he's been everywhere but this is a great opportunity to say just come to detroit we don't care where you want to go we've got a facility for you i noticed the press release actually mentioned a, a career arc like where a musician is in their arc it yes. depends on what venue they play that often happens that if, if you're on your way up then you might want to play a metal Brook or something like that or the Fox Theater on your way. If you're on your way down, sometimes you play to smaller audiences, but this is perfect. And and what it allows us to do with smaller venues is start young artists off and, and really build their careers and help them build their careers right here through Detroit. Tom, good to see you. Good to see you, Thanks Jason. For coming in so early. Brandon, he came in early for us. What a guy. It's amazing. I, yeah, I saw Tool at DTE this summer and a perfect circle coming up in November. That's sort of the tool side project. So you see the different sizes of crowds based on the, I guess, popularity of the band, but everything makes sense to me. That's awesome. Some good shows coming up too. And of course your wings and pistons getting going. Best time of the year right now. Sunrise on this Monday, 7.39 a.m. Your sun sets tonight at 7.01. A better shot at seeing the sun set than the sun rise. We have clouds around and we do have spotty showers. Notice uh, leaving uh, parts of Oakland County into Macomb County shortly. Uh, Macomb, Sterling Heights, Romeo, and then heading uh, up into St. Clair, Sanilac County. Some of these showers, very light, but uh, uh, this is nuisance rain coming into Livingston County, I-96, as you head out toward Lansing. And we've had spotty showers throughout the morning, so most of our roadways are a little bit slippery, and Kim has been tracking some accidents as well. It's been a little heavier rain up north, so temps in the upper 50s in our north zone, Sandusky 58. It is Emmett at 57, 61 Pontiac. 59 in Holly and right around 60 degrees with some rain cooled air over parts of Livingston County, a little closer to home here, low and middle 60s in our metro zone, south and west zones. The low clouds, drizzle, showers, all of that, 8, 9 o'clock really starts to wrap up and exit quickly. Partly sunny to mostly sunny, 77 degrees on this Columbus day. Looks good. And the Kim cast is also improving. Right now it's probably fair to poor and then eventually it gets good with dry conditions coming and calmer winds today. That's good news. A little cool front coming at us, which means slightly cooler temperatures tomorrow, about 71 degrees. Showers Wednesday morning and then again on Sunday, but we're going to have some nice 70s again by Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so get ready for that. Your Hanson's weather window. This is a beautiful shot. Uh, about an hour ago, we couldn't see from the low clouds and drizzle, but now the Penobscot shot down toward the river and the flag at half staff, of course. Looks good. Good morning, Windsor, on our 1 800 Hansen's weather window. Kim is here for live traffic. We mentioned you've been tracking some trouble with this rain. That's right. We do have slippery roads right now, which is why we're seeing some problems out there. This has been the biggest problem of the morning. We're looking at the north and southbound I-75 ramps to westbound I-96 here. They're currently closed. However, they're letting at 
one side at a time go by on the shoulder just to get around this because the backups are pretty big as traffic volumes start to build. So in the meantime, you're going to want to avoid this area loop around this. We have a detour in place for you, which is taking the lodge to I-94. We'll help you with that. C keep you updated on this when this clears. It looks like they're just cleaning it up right now again, but you do want to use that detour in the meantime. We do have another accident I want to let you know about over on the westbound express lanes of I-96 just past Southfield Freeway here. The right shoulder is blocked. We're not seeing much of a delay here but just something to be careful of. And then I want to take a live check at our roads right now with our 1-800 call Sam Chopper shot. Here's a look at I-75 right at 12 mile. This gives you a pretty good look of what the roads look like. They do look like they're kind of drying up a little bit. We had that rain overnight, but you're still going to see some pooling and ponding out there. So take it easy this morning and maybe leave a little bit earlier. Back to you. All right, Kim, thank you. In today's consumer headlines, a double dose of Star Wars news. Plus, McDonald's is promising more Szechuan sauce following customer backlash. But first, gas prices taking a dip. Let's get to Maribel Aber joining us now live from NASDAQ with more. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Rhonda. Gas prices in Michigan are down 10 cents from last week. The statewide average is $2.40 a gallon. This is according to AAA Michigan. Now, despite the drop, the price is up 5 cents from a year ago. Metro Detroit's current average is about $2.42 per gallon, 6 cents less than last week's average. McDonald's is promising more Szechuan sauce after a weekend promotion underestimated demand. The fast food chain brought back the sauce in a very limited quantity Saturday. It was a promotional event driven by the, talks, uh, the talk of the sauce on the animated show Rick and Morty. Uh, but the Szechuan sauce packets were snapped up quickly, triggering outcry on social media. McDonald's vows to bring the sauce back this winter and make it more widely available. The trailer for the new Star Wars movie will debut on Monday Night Football tonight. Look for the trailer during halftime of the Minnesota Vikings-Chicago Bears game. Tickets to The Last Jedi will go on sale after the game ends. The movie is the eighth installment in the Star Wars franchise and opens December 15th. Rhonda. I saw a Blade Runner on Friday. The preview of The Last Jedi went up. I think this is going to be oh. epic. Hopefully better than Blade Runner, but uh, that's just me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not a good review there. All right, Mirabelle, thank you. And speaking of tickets going on sale, tickets are going to be available today for the beatification mass for Father Solanus Casey. Tickets will be made available to the public starting at 9 this morning, exclusively on the Fort Field website. The mass is happening on Saturday, November 18th. It's scheduled for 4 p.m. at Fort Field. The tickets are free with a small order processing fee, and they're also limited to a maximum of four tickets per order. So definitely get on that right away. It is 620, everybody, and they suffered a loss, and people are questioning whether or not Matt, suffered, Matt Stafford suffered an injury. We'll tell you what happens when the Lions QB is asked about this concerning limp. That's coming up. Plus, before you pick out your Halloween costume, a new warning about those novelty contact lenses you need to hear about. And before we get a break, it's time to meet today's Facebook friend for today. This is Nathan Berman. He's pictured here with his bride. His wife's name is Tony. She's from Detroit, and he works at Wayne State University and loves to barbecue and go fishing. Oh, you've had good weather for that lately. We want to send you a gift card, though, for one of those days when you're not barbecuing to Happy's Pizza just for being our friend of the day. So congratulations to you, Nathan, and an invitation to anybody else. If you want to be our next friend of the day, like the Local 4 Facebook page and click on the Friend of the Day tab. We're back in a moment. All right, welcome back, everybody, in good health. You might not want to make contact lenses part of your Halloween costume this year without proper advice from a doctor. Researchers warn that these novelty contacts are more prone to rip. And when the contacts rip, because they're not customized for each person's individual eye shape, it could scratch your cornea and lead to increased risk of corneal abrasions and even ulcers. So for those who are planning to wear non-prescription contacts for Halloween, it's best to consult with an optometrist to receive the proper measurements. And Brandon, I know you've worn some contact lenses in the year and scared us all. I think you had what, green ones, I right? Had green eyes. Like lime green. Like crazy, like uh, green screen green eyes, like the color of the rain on your map green. So we'll try to revive those and keep the eyes safe this year. But you notice the rain showers are very, very spotty and light, but at times through the overnight, they have been a little heavier. So we do have some slippery streets and slow conditions driving by mid morning, more and more clearing and we get some sun by lunch, 70 degrees, 77 your afternoon high with some very nice afternoon sun, Kim. 
All right, well, here's that problem we've been dealing with all morning. You're looking at the north and southbound I-75 ramps to westbound I-94. The northbound side of 75, that has just one lane blocked, but the southbound one is completely closed still. They're letting them get by, but still having trouble here. We'll keep you updated on this one. In the meantime, you're going to want to use Lodge to I-94. All right, let's talk football. The Detroit Lions took on and lost to the Carolina Panthers at Ford Field over the weekend, actually yesterday. The offense woke up late again, but it wasn't enough as the Lions fell 27-24 to the Panthers. They are now three and two on the season after the game. Lions quarterback Matthew Stafford admitted the offense has to play better early in the game, but he did not talk about his gimpy right leg or foot or something. He refused to talk about his health, directing reporters to ask Coach Caldwell instead. The Lions will now travel to New Orleans to take on the Saints next week before heading into their bye week, and this is a good matchup for our offense to get going in the first half guys all right hopefully he is okay and it's yeah. nothing major thank you brandon it is 627 here on your monday morning and next at 6 30 local stories from sterling heights also superior township and detroit but first it's the stuff you see in movies plenty of tricks and flips that's coming up next is today's top video everybody the nova all right, welcome back, everybody. It's time for today's top video. More than 2,000 people gathered on the Greek island of Santorini to watch the Red Bull Art of Motion free running event. Pretty cool. The top three contestants included athletes from the Ukraine, Greece, and right here in the United States. It might be hard to believe by watching this video, but there were no injuries reported. And we know we have some good free runners here. I was going to say, yeah, they were watching free uh, <laughs> Fitness Friday. Right, Phoenix Free Running Academy in Livonia. If you want to learn how to do it, they'll show you. We're back in a minute. Join Planet. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 6.30 starts now. Murder mystery. A young man gunned down in Superior Township and no one is in custody. Plus, the iconic Kronk gym building is destroyed by a fire. Investigators say this could be arson. Brandon? Well, taking a look at the radar here, we do have some showers just west of Detroit, a little line down 75, and even as we head up toward our north zone, as we take a look, a perhaps wider view, you can see some heavier showers off to our east. This is, everybody, Nate this morning say good morning to a former <laughs> hurricane <laughs> moving right. working its way out not a, not a bad telestration for a monday morning he got the ding not the applause but the ding the ding that was just kind of That's like a, all right that was okay <laughs> meanwhile you're gonna need the umbrella as brandon is alluding to uh this morning as yeah. you head out to the bus stop and we've had this freeway closure all morning so kim is standing by but first uh look at the forecast with brandon yeah one thing always leads to the other right and we do have some showers around but it was heavier through the earlier morning hours and all of our roads are a little bit slippery more so in some spots than others most of our four zone temperatures in the the 60s. We have our north zone in Lapeer at 58 as a cool spot, but low 60s elsewhere. And showers again are on the light side, but right here on the Oakland Macomb County line coming into Romeo, Macomb, Sterling Heights, you see some more showers coming into Livingston County on the lighter side, moving pretty quickly to the east. And again, this is uh, former Hurricane Nate, now just an area of low pressure right over the Pennsylvania and uh, Ohio line and it's moving pretty quickly into the northeast. So we only have the showers around during the morning hours over the next couple of hours. Things really beginning to wrap up. Happy Columbus Day, everybody. Don't have a, a ton of you probably with the day off, but it would be a good one with the low clouds and drizzle wrapping up by 8, 9 o'clock this morning. Partly sunny through the morning, 71 at noon, a high of 77 degrees with a good deal of sunshine coming your way uh, through the mid-morning into the afternoon, but it doesn't do us any good now. No. The roadways are all wet, and we've had some... Yeah, some issues. Some out big there. problems yeah. out there.
How bad is this whole 96 to 75 well, area? Well, 90, it's not the 275 area. It's or, downtown I meant here. Two. Oh, I got you. I'm like, like the, what? The interstate. We've <laughs> been talking about this all morning. Right? You know, I was listening. <laughs> Just wanted to be clear. All right, well, it, it's getting a lot better, actually. Wow, here's a look at what we're dealing with right now. Looks like they cleared it. That's amazing news. I do want to let you know what was actually happening there, though. We did have two jackknife semi trucks out there causing all sorts of backups, but take a look at what we're dealing with now. It looks like smooth sailing. Let's just double check on that right now with our 1-800 call Sam Chopper shot who was over this. And as you can see, it looks like that is completely clear. So Rhonda, to answer your question, it's great now. Awesome. <laughs> so if you're headed out the door, all you need to be careful of is the rain out there. Watch out for pooling and ponding. It's going to be a tricky morning commute because of that. But the good news is, is north and southbound I-75 ramps to I-96 are back open. Back to you. Good to see no issues on your way to 75. That's right. right. It is 634. Everybody, let's get to this developing story out of Superior Township where investigators are working to find the gunman who killed a 20 year old man. And quite a mystery unfolding here. Rod Maloney joins us now to show us the shots were fired after some kind of argument at this apartment complex. Rod. More questions asked than answered in this particular case. 20 year old DeAndre Willingham was shot and killed yesterday afternoon. Now, he lives out or he was out at the Danbury Park Manor Apartments and they're off of MacArthur Boulevard near Gettys Road in Ypsilanti Township. Around four o'clock yesterday afternoon, we're told that some kind of altercation or fight broke out, but there is precious little information about what precisely happened, who was fighting, why they were fighting, and how it was that DeAndre Willingham was in fact shot. But that's exactly what happened. And so uh, Ypsilanti police were called uh, DeAndre was brought to the hospital there, local hospital there in Ypsilanti, and, uh, and he expired in the hospital. We're not sure exactly how it was that he was even brought to the hospital, whether it was by ambulance or perhaps a family or friend or somebody who knew him brought him to the hospital. And so much to talk about, much for the police to let us in on today in terms of what exactly happened. Reporting in downtown Detroit, Rod Maloney, Local 4. All right, everyone, thank you for the update there. It is 635, everybody. Now we want to get to some stories that are making headlines all across Metro Detroit. Yes, they come to us out of Southfield and Sterling Heights, but we will start in Detroit in the old Kronk Gym building. It's an iconic building, and it's now completely destroyed by a fire over the weekend. The suspicious fire started on the second floor of that old Kronk Boxing Gym right there on Detroit's west side. It happened Saturday night. More than 50 firefighters responded, but were pulled out of the building due to safety concerns. After four hours, the fire was finally contained, but it's a complete loss. More than 40 world champions, they started training right there at that iconic building, including former world champion Tommy Hitman Hearns. This place has done a lot for a lot of people, not just Thomas Hearns. It helped a lot of people, it helped, it helped a lot of youth. Stay out of trouble. Whoever would go up on the second floor and deliberately set this fire, that's a monster. And it certainly left an eyesore there in that community. The Kronk Gym does have a new gym building now. This one closed back in 2006 and has been abandoned ever since. That fire is now being investigated as arson. City of Southfield officials say demolition set to start on the former Northland Center Mall by the end of the month. The Macy's and former J.L. Hudson's portion will remain intact due to its historical and architectural significance. In 2015, the last operating stores of the mall closed. You might remember this. Demolition and cleanup is expected to cost between 8 and $10 million. And it's Sterling Heights now. Several first responders were honored during a special celebration that you can see here on your screen. Yeah, we're talking city leaders honoring police officers, firefighters, and others in the community who went above and beyond the call of duty to save lives over the past year. Among those honored were dispatchers who helped coordinate emergency crews responding to that four alarm fire at the Buff Whelan Chevrolet dealership over the summer. When I review the incidents and stuff, it kind of chokes me up, uh, but it's, it's good to uh, honor people and recognize them for their efforts. And the whole community came out for it. The award ceremony was held as part of the fire station's annual open house, which is held every year at the departments across the much. area. It is now 638 here on your Monday morning, and let's send things over to Jason, see what he's working on.
Good morning. Fallout in Hollywood, one of Tinseltown's biggest producers now out of a job in light of sexual harassment claims. But new this morning, did an NBC show know about these allegations years ago? But first, road rage. The reason this man jumped in front of a moving bus and is hanging on for dear life. And the weekend has ended, which means we're gearing up for another Friday football frenzy game of the week. Highlights from last week's game of the week are on as well at the For Frenzy page of ClickOnDetroit.com. And you can become a liaison for us as well. See how by going to our website. We'll be right back. For Frenzy. Welcome back everyone. It is 641 and take a look at the video on the right hand side of your screen. It's of this wild ride all caught on camera in Maryland. You can see this man, uh, angry man in the baseball cap who just pounded on the front of the bus there was clinging onto this bus as it was moving. This is a school bus and Baltimore County Police say that this 68 year old man was sitting in traffic next to the bus when a bottle of some sorts was reportedly thrown out of the bus and toward his car. Well, he apparently didn't like that, got out of his car and started banging on the bus door, eventually clinging onto it as the driver took off and started driving. That man is now in custody and he's facing several charges. Probably best just to write down the license plate and let the police handle it. Rhonda? He would have fallen off. Who knows what could have happened? That's just crazy. Well, it is now close to three weeks after Hurricane Maria hammered Puerto Rico. A Metro Detroit family joins the chorus of those pleading for help for the island. Shannon Vidal, he is originally from Puerto Rico, but he now lives in Oak Park. His mother was on the island when that strong hurricane category four hit Puerto Rico. Now they are reunited right now. He was able to bring his mom here from Puerto Rico at least for the next few days. But for two long weeks, he had no contact with his mother and had no idea if she survived that storm. Very hectic, very, very hectic. Um, just trying to get in contact. I wanted people to understand the severity of situation. So much devastation there and that island is largely still without power and many people still need clean water, food and fuel. Well, after slamming the Gulf Coast as a category one hurricane over the weekend, Hurricane Nate has since been downgraded to a tropical depression. The storm made its second landfall in Mississippi early Sunday morning as a category one hurricane before again being downgraded. Nate's Sunday landfall was the first hurricane to hit Mississippi since Katrina in 2005. And this morning, more than 100,000 power outages are being reported across the south. And uh, Brandon, we're actually seeing some of the remnants of Nate this morning. We're going to need an umbrella. Yes, and you know, it's a little more common a name than Harvey or Irma. So you might have a friend or a family member. Don't give them too much trouble this morning. Nate King. It's the youth pastor at my church. It's his fault. Uh, local four storm pins. What a beautiful shot here from Jennifer in Pleasant Ridge, just south of the zoo. And she says, pretty in pink sunset in Pleasant Ridge. I noticed a gorgeous, similar type sunsets yesterday. Great colors, lower sun angles. As we take a look at four live radar right now, we're dealing with some shower activity. It's very light stuff, but yes, this is the remnants of what was a category one hurricane Nate, now just a post tropical cyclone, an area of low pressure off to our east. And these showers are quickly racing to the east. Still some low clouds and drizzle to start our Columbus Day as we go out exploring for sunshine. It comes our way through the mid late morning and it's with us through the afternoon at 77 degrees. Ah. Average is 65 FYI, and we're getting well above that. In fact, starting our day near average, 64 degrees out there right now. A little northeast wind at 7. Nate is quickly pushing through Ohio, Pennsylvania into the northeast today, and you can see we're just on the western edge of this. 
We do have a cool front coming through late today, not with any fanfare here. No pomp and circumstance, just a cool front. A little bit more cloud cover tomorrow and slightly cooler temperatures. Wednesday, our next chance for wet weather, not seeing anything really happening today as we go into again Wednesday. We'll be watching that system through the I think first half of the day, maybe early mid afternoon, but tomorrow down to about 71 degrees after today's 77 60s with the clouds and showers around on Wednesday, but temps do build back up Thursday, Friday, Saturday and rain and thunder shower chances by Sunday morning. So if you're looking for that free watering for the uh, new shrubs and any grass maybe you've planted this morning, obviously, but Wednesday and Sunday as well, guys. Not a, not a bad looking week, Brandon. Thank yeah. you. Meanwhile, thankfully the commute's gotten a lot better. I wanted to tell you congratulations on your win on Saturday. Wha <laughs> wow. Big. Oh, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> She kicked out the rain at the big house. I also want to say congratulations to myself for making it through yeah. the whole game. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, the rankings changed. Michigan State for the first time since, I don't know, 2015. Yeah. Back in the ranking for the top 25, I think for around 21st place. So. Yeah. Was the rest of your night good. okay after was, all that? It was good. I will say I'm disappointed, but yeah. that's what makes a rivalry so great. Yes. Yeah. Got yeah. Indeed. Yes. All right. Well, let's get to the, <laughs> to the traffic. Big moment. Here, I right? know. Big We're moment. getting turning today. a new page. It's a friendly rivalry. Let everybody know. <laughs> this is true. All right. Well, let's take a look here. We had this big problem over on uh, the north and southbound I-75 ramps to I-96. Two jackknife semis. But look at we are looking good right now. That has just cleared recently, so we are all good in that area. However, I am hearing about a new accident over on westbound I-94, right at I-75, just blocking the shoulder, so we're not seeing any major delays there. But as traffic volumes start to build, that's something you're going to want to keep in mind for your morning commute. Now I do want to take a look right now with our 1-800 call Sam Chopper shot to see what's going on over in this area. This is I-696 right at Woodward. Conditions actually looking a little bit better than they were earlier this morning. Some of that rain is drying up, but still may see some pooling and ponding out there. So may want to give yourself a few extra minutes, but this area, nothing you need to worry about as far as backups, accidents or stalled vehicles. Over to you. All right, Kim, thank you. It is 648 now, and we're talking about Hollywood and the swift fall from grace. Oh, yeah, one of the most powerful moguls in Hollywood. A Hollywood producer has been fired from his movie company that bears his name. Mm -hmm. Jason, this comes just days after a pretty eye-opening report about sexual harassment. Yeah, it bears his name for not much longer. Harvey Weinstein, co-founder of the Weinstein Company and producer of films like Shakespeare in Love and Gangs of New York, Pulp Fiction, facing fallout over sexual harassment harassment allegations. Fallout for Weinstein began Thursday when the New York Times reported that he had reached at least eight settlements with women who accused him of sexual harassment and unwanted physical conduct. Two of those settlements were with Ashley Judd and Rose McGowan. Shortly after the article was published, Weinstein took a voluntary leave of absence from the company, but that wasn't enough, according to the company's board of directors, including his brother Bob. The board issued a statement last night saying, in light of new information about Ms conduct by Harvey Weinstein that has emerged in the last few days, his employment with the Weinstein Company is terminated effective immediately. So far, there's been no comment from Weinstein, but President Trump had something to say on Sunday. I've known uh, Harvey Weinstein for a long time. I'm not at all surprised to see it. Yeah. Uh, now, something interesting has emerged in the last few days after news of the scandal broke. Apparently, the NBC show 30 Rock alluded to these allegations back in 2012 during an episode. This was first noticed on Twitter, and we are choosing not to show the clip as it makes light of a serious situation. Also, it wasn't the first time the sitcom made reference to such a controversy. In 2009, it joked about sex assault allegations against Bill Cosby. Coming up at 7 today, we'll take a closer look at the allegations and the fallout. Back to you. Right. Seems like those writers might have known something, or you know what I mean? Perhaps. All right. All right. Thank you, Jason. Time now is 6.50. We've got your stories to watch for coming up next. Keep it here. Sky 4.
welcome back everybody at 653. Some stories to watch for. Federal investigators searched the home of 64 year old Stephen Paddock over the weekend. They see it was for redocumenting and rechecking exactly one week ago. Paddock opened fire, killing 58 people and injuring 500 others in Las Vegas. And still no arrests in a murder in Superior Township. 20 year old DeAndre Willingham was shot and killed after a fight at an apartment complex. The shots rang out on Sunday at Danbury Park Manor right off of MacArthur near Gettys. It's unclear what led to this fight. Later today, clergy and activists are expected to announce a march on the Michigan State Police headquarters. This as the investigation into the death of 15 year old Damon Grimes continues. Grimes was killed during a police pursuit by police. Uh, the group is also expected to demand Colonel Christy Achu's resignation. The ongoing criminal trial for the Flint water crisis continues today as Michigan Health and Human Services Director Nick Lyon appears back in court. Lyon and a group of other officials are accused of withholding information from the public and is charged with involuntary manslaughter and misconduct in office. And Hurricane Nate has been downgraded to a tropical depression, but many across the nation are still feeling the effects of it this morning. More than 100,000 people remain without power in multiple states along the Gulf Coast, and we're even getting a little bit of the rain here. Lions are feeling a little nervous today, waiting to find out what's wrong with quarterback Matt Stafford. When questioned about his health after Sunday's loss to the Carolina Panthers, Stafford declined to give any detail, didn't want to talk about it, instead directing reporters to coach Jim Caldwell. And you don't need to have the force to get your hands on advanced tickets to the newest Star Wars movie, The Last Jedi. Tonight, a brand new trailer is going to be released during Monday Night Football, immediately followed by tickets being available at most movie theaters. The movie hits theaters December 15th. Jason, over to you. Today on ClickOnDetroit.com, the end of a digital era, we're looking back at the AOL Instant Messenger. That's right, as the company prepares to shut it down for good, that's on the tech page at ClickOn. Plus, dress up your pet and win big. See how you can score free pet food for a year and Detroit Lions tickets just for putting your furry friend in a costume. That is on the home page. Plus, go ahead, have dark chocolate for breakfast. Experts reveal what the sweet treat can do for you, but portion size really does matter. That is on the health page. Let's go back to the studio. Go green, go white. I've got a little green on the map this morning, which means a little bit of rain. 64 degrees and just a little bit of light spotty rain pushing through the area. This is the end of it. Some low clouds and drizzle. Other than that, by nine o'clock or so, we're really starting to dry out. 77 degrees, well above normal and plenty of afternoon sun on this Columbus Day, Kim. All right, one problem out there to let you know about before you head out the door. Westbound I-94 just past I-75. We have an accident blocking the right shoulder, seeing a little bit of a delay there. I got to give it up to Kim DiGiulio. Not only is she a huge Michigan fan, but a good sport. Thank you. You know, like yes. taking that loss with, with very, a lot of pride in class. <laughs> Thank you. Well, still, it's not, the season isn't over. Not at all. No. It's one loss for the season. Exactly. So very good record yes. to get the season started for both teams. So we're Absolutely. excited about that. Have a good day, everybody. The Today Show is next.